you treat it better Make sure to see it through Don't be just everything she wants Be everything she needs When she says she loves you Tell her you love her What your heart wants you to Tell her she's lovely Always tell her the truth And she says she loves you Tell her you love her too But please don't Run away, run away When you get tired Slip away, slip away, and start a fire But that can never be put out A hurry time is running out But don't you run away, run away Before you tell her 
Who gives this woman to be married to this man? This is the point at which I'm supposed to give my daughter away. But I'm not going to do that. Instead, I'm going to release to you the honor of my life. From the moment I first saw Abby, I never could have imagined the beautiful, talented, strong, loving woman that she has become. But she did not then belong to me, and she does not belong to me now. Nor does she belong to anyone else for that matter. Because she's God's creation, and she belongs to Him. So Connor, I pass to you the honor of your life. Be her everything. Because she is now your privilege. <laughs> Abby has my blessings to marry this man. You may be seated. The Bible has much to say about marriage, both directly and indirectly. The union which we're here today to witness is the first and the oldest rite in the world. Marriage was instituted by God Himself, and the first marriage was performed by Him. So significant is marriage that the Son of God chose to begin His earthly ministry by joining a wedding celebration with His friends. With each of us is saying by our presence here is symbolic. Although man is fallen because of sin, marriage is not fallen. It is part of man's original relationship to God, which continues to bring happiness and blessing. Each of us can discover that blessing and happiness in marriage comes through tenderness, thoughtfulness, patience, kindness, and carefulness in many ways in which we express the self-sacrifice to the other. And as you stand here today, it should be your desire that this ceremony not only reflects your commitment to one another, but also your individual and shared commitment to Christ. Marriage is the clasping of hands, the blending of hearts, the union of where two lives become one. This marriage will stand by the strength of your love and the power of faith you have in one another and also in God. These hands which you hold on this wedding day are the hands that will hold you and who promises to hold you all the days of your life. They'll hold you during times of laughter and times of sorrow. These are the hands that will hold you and comfort you when you're sick and console you when you're heartbroken. And these are the hands which will passionately love and cherish you throughout the rest of the years of your life. It's such a commitment of self to one another in Christ which God expects us to make which Connor and Abby will make in their pledges that they give today. Let us pray. Faithful Father, loving Lord, you are the sense of all love. Please honor us this day with a deep sense of your presence presiding over this ceremony. We ask for your superintendence and we ask Lord that your anointing be upon these two as they've come to a most significant point in their lives. Be near to them as they pledge before you their love, their commitment, and their faithfulness. In Jesus' name, amen. Connor and Abby, God has given you life and he's made you for himself. This same creator has placed each of you in the circle of his love. He gave you the exposure 
to the moods and the emotions, the feelings and the taste that would shape your individual lives. Our Creator, our Heavenly Father, carefully filtered what He would allow to permit to touch and form your individual lives for His pleasure. And so you not only belong to Him, but this moment He gives you to each other. Abby and Connor have chosen to read their vows one to another. And Abby. Connor Wayne, the day we have prayed for, planned for, and not so patiently waited for is finally here. The day I finally get to start calling you my husband. Two years ago when we met, I knew you would have an important role in my life, but I was unsure of what that would be. The more time we began to spend together, I began to realize I was going to need to learn a lot more about NASCAR and all sports if this was ever going to work. <laughs> now here we are, and I wear NASCAR apparel and spend most Sunday afternoons watching cars turn left. <laughs> Love definitely changes some things. I remember as a little girl, always praying for God to send me my soulmate one day. I prayed for someone who was patient, loving, generous, and thoughtful, but also someone who was sarcastic, silly, and willing to take on adventures with me. Needless to say, I believe our God fulfilled my wish. He knew that my soul needed you. I'm so thankful that He's seen it fit for us to be standing here on this day at this time, beginning our lives together to glorify Him. As we all know, I am the most indecisive person on earth, but one thing I have never been uncertain about is the love I have for you. I can truly say that I am standing here today marrying my best friend. The way you choose to love me is so genuine and pure on the good days and the bad. From celebrating any accomplishment to you taking my hand and always reminding me everything is going to be okay. Your love is constant and consistent. You are the calm to my storm, the person who helps keep me sane, and is not afraid to tell me when I'm wrong. Loving you for the rest of my days is easily the best decision I've ever made. I promise I will strive to be my very best for you each and every day. I promise to love you through the good and the bad. And I promise I will improve my cooking skills so you don't have to eat a burnt grilled cheese every night for dinner. <laughs> you are without a doubt my person and I promise to love you for the rest of my life, Corner Wayne. I'm so ready to spend my life with you. Connor. All right, I'll somehow do it. Okay. To my Abby Ray, June 18th, 2021, the day I knew I found my wife. It was our first date, but I felt like we always knew each other. I was a nervous wreck all day, but the moment I saw you, all the anxiety went away. When I brought you back to your house that night, I didn't really know how to say goodbye, and honestly, I didn't want to say goodbye. So instead of telling you goodnight, I did the next logical thing anyone else would do and kiss you instead. Which means, yes, I'm finally admitting that I made the first move. <laughs> <laughs> to my amazement, you kissed me back, which made it even harder for me to leave. By the time it was all over, I rushed back home to the house at one in the morning, woke up my mom, and excitedly told her, I think I'm going to marry that girl. Now, 729 days later, I can happily say, this is the first time I've been correct about anything in our relationship. <laughs> From the moment I met you, I knew I wanted to marry you. I had never been so loved, so cared for, and so wanted by anyone until I met you. God gave me the kindest, sweetest, funniest, most loving soul in the world. But he also gave me the most stubborn and hard-nosed girl in the world as well. I love you more than words can express. I love every little thing about you. I love that you always scratch my back when it itches. I love that you always sing Christmas carols and the national anthem at various points in the day with me. I love that you're willing to go with me to get autographs at any sporting event. I love that you watch NASCAR with me and cheer for Ricky Stenhouse Jr. just as much as I do, and maybe even get a little more mad when he wrecks than I do. I love that you love the Lord with all your heart and how strong your faith is. The book of Proverbs talks about a wife of noble character. Chapter 31 says that she is worth more than rubies, and her husband has full confidence in her and lacks nothing in value. Abby, God gave me everything I could ever need when he put you in my life. Your love is worth more than anything in this world could ever offer. 
Your love is patient, your love is kind, and your love is all that I've ever wanted. Abby, I promise I'll always keep God first at the center of our marriage. I promise that I'll do everything I can to be the best husband for you and hopefully one day be the best father in our family. You deserve the world and I'm going to do everything I can to give it to you. I can't promise everything is going to be easy and that our marriage will have smooth sailing. But I do promise that whatever comes our way, I'll be by your side, holding your hand the entire time and ready to take on whatever the world gives us. I'm so excited to be your husband, Abby Ray. I'm so excited for life with you. And just remember that I'll always love you. I'll always love you, Abby Ray, forever and always till the end of time. Can we have the rings, please? There are several mementos of your wedding and of this moment. Your wedding picture, their certificate, a pressed flower, and many others. But this, these will be, for the most part, just handled fondly on occasion. But your rings have a special message and will be the one ever present and ever seen reminder of this hour. And here is their message. They are round. The circle is the symbol of eternity. And God intends that this union be until death do you part or until Jesus comes. This is an enduring and lasting and eternal union. They are a design. Be they ornate or plain, the artesian who designed them had a pattern in mind. And God has a plan and a pattern in mind for your lives. He has led you together and desires that you will live faithfully unto Him all the days of your lives. Your rings are made of a precious metal. And that metal was made precious by the refiner's fire. I wish I could have promised you all clear skies and smooth roads, but that's not realistic. There will be difficult times and trials, and these are not meant to divide you, but to bring you closer together to make this union stronger and more precious. And one last thought at this moment, but a valid one, and that is that at some distant point, one of you will be taken before the other. And at that moment, your rings will serve as a reminder of this moment and all the wonderful things you will have shared from this moment to that. Wear them as a constant reminder of these vows and this message. Connor, place the ring on Abby's finger and repeat after me. This ring, this ring I give unto you, I give unto you, in token, in token, and in pledge, and in pledge of our constant faith, of our constant faith, and abiding love, and abiding love. And Abby, place the ring on Connor's finger, and repeat after me. This ring, this ring, I give unto you, I give unto you, in token, in token, and pledge, and pledge of our constant faith, of our constant faith, and abiding love, and abiding love. <laughs> Today, Connor and Abby have chosen to commemorate their marriage and commitment to the Lord through the threefold court ceremony. Pastor Dean Hahn. Thank you so much, Pastor. And it is an honor to be here as part of this wedding with Connor and Abby. And I pray God's great, great blessings upon both of you. This beautiful plaque that is before us today is a, is a reminder of what's going to happen as this couple comes together. You will notice that it has a rope on it, and that rope is in the shape of a cross. We are reminded that it is because of Jesus Christ and our eternal salvation that we come together today and we see this couple pledging their lives together with one another. It's also an honor for me to share with you from Scripture about the principle of the threefold cord. Connor and Abby are joining their lives together today and fulfilling God's plan and purpose for marriage and the home. After God created Adam, he declared, It's not good for man to be alone. The union of a man and a woman in marriage was God's idea from the very beginning. Why? Solomon gives us the answer in Ecclesiastes chapter 4 
verses 9, 19 through 21, where he begins by saying, two are better than one. He then gives us four reasons why two coming together are better, stronger than one. Two have greater potential for productivity. Solomon says they have a good reward for their labor. They have greater strength. He says if one falls, the other will lift up his companion. He says they have greater comfort. They will keep one another warm when life becomes cold and harsh. They also have greater security. For he says two together can better withstand life's crises. But then Solomon ends this passage with a powerful statement. And this is what we're going to look at today. A threefold cord is not quickly broken. Two is good, but a third cord makes the relationship and the bond even stronger. And who is that third cord in a strong marriage? None other but the Lord Himself. God wants the two of you to come together as man and wife. But He wants you to enter your relationship together knowing that He wants to enter with you and develop a threefold strong cord and bond of love through His strength, His presence, and His power. Yes, two are better than one, but the third cord is the Lord who will not only bring you together and bind you together, but also bless you together with His love and His power. Connor and Abby, I pray God's rich, rich blessings upon you today. Would you join with me as we pray a blessing over Connor and Abby today? Father, we thank you so much that you want to enter into this relationship and become the strong partner with this couple as you have brought them together by your divine providence, by your will and your love. We pray, Lord, your great, great blessing upon them. We pray, Father, for their future. We pray for their home, their marriage. We pray, Father, for their families, that you continue to help them to walk together in your strength, your purpose, your plan, and your power. Lord, may you be honored and glorified in the days ahead. And we praise you and thank you in the name that is above every name, the name of our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. May God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit bless and preserve you. May the Lord mercifully with His favor look upon you and fill you with all spiritual benediction and grace that you may so live together in this life and that in the world to come you may have life everlasting. For as much as you, Connor and Abby, have pledged your faith in and love to each other, and sealed your solemn marital vows by the giving and receiving of the rings. 
acting in the authority vested in me by the laws of this state, and looking to heaven for divine sanction, I pronounce you husband and wife in the presence of God and these assembled witnesses. Connor. Yeah. <laughs> Connor. Don't tease me. <laughs> Connor. Yes, sir. You may kiss your bride. It is my joy to pronounce to you Mr. and Mrs. Connor Richardson. Alright, let's go. Alright, you ready? Alright, let's do it.